What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a shout out to our new Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Jackie the Sexy Hobby Cook, Echo, not Gecko, Melissa Espinoza, Mr. I Like Pog, Content Junkie, Lindsay Reposarda, Kenjiro Talbashi, Arazuku, Nia, Sebastian Austin, Commander Nom Nom, Daniel Hudson, Joseph Vega, Garrett, Michael Townley, The One Who Crawls, Mark Trobo, Darwin Kissling, Bryce Canales, Kala Dolman, Lucille Bird, Eric Smith, Lupus Deus, David King III, Alan Barty, Michael Pedigo, Sandra Halverson, Kelsey Decker, Gavin King, Freddy69, Zach Sharp, OXL, Rondi Warnock, DDB, Miyamoto Musashi, Based Man, Flipside TV, The Imagination Squad 1, Alucard Lolly, Seth Johnson, Sasso Oselnik, These Myths, and Rashawn Moore. And I would also like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimpster 101, Evan Brummett, and welcome our new executive producer, Angel Morales. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is right beside the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Ah, the power yeah, Christ compels you. Getting... Ah! Oh, she didn't hear. Bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. Holy shit. Same, same area, same area. I'm locked in here. I'm locked in. No. Stay away. Stay away from me. No. I cannot tell you how many, like, how much of these two I've watched. I've actually lost, like, like, there are so many classic bits in Tom and Jerry that I cannot help but just think to myself, wow. Like, the, the amount of, the amount of great comedy that you got out of these two, like, especially their earliest days, because, uh, when they were, when they were, uh, when they were originally produced, I think it was Hannah Barbera who produced mm -hmm. them early on, and then uh, I think Chuck Jones took over, which is why you know you saw like the difference in animation styles. You know, you saw the more like uh more bright and colorful one, and then later on, like a more traditionally drawn version of Tom and Jerry. And Tom and Jerry, for the longest time, has been uh, sort of like second fiddle in stories. Like they've done. Uh, uh, Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz, Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Tom and Jerry and the uh, Secret of uh, King Arthur, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But we haven't had a Tom and Jerry, like, mainline just them for a long time. And I remember the movie that came out in the 90s where basically... If they would have just told the story of Tom and Jerry, you know, just like having to move somewhere else and get into shenanigans on the way there, that'd be one thing. But instead, they get involved with this little girl. Rob, I don't know if you remember the movie from, like, back in the 90s. You'd, oh my gosh. There was this little girl that came along. She was an or, uh, she was perceived to be an orphan, uh, but her father, who literally was Indiana Jones, like, the, the fedora, the ja leather jacket, everything, except he had, a like, a Tom Selleck mustache. Yeah. And uh, basically, a devious aunt and uncle trying to steal money from uh, from the and there were musical sections in this. There was a there was a, there was a, a devious doctor who looked like he was going to sexually assault an ice cream cart. I'm not joking. I am not joking. What are you sure this was like officially licensed? I'm Are you not sure joking. this wasn't like the I, dark side of the web you're talking about? I swear to God, this was real. This was terribly real. Oh, and there was also and there was also a uh, amusement park owner who looked like uh, a character from uh, who looked like a, a longshoreman version of Captain Crunch with a to a squawking parrot puppet. Like I'm disturbed. No, your I am too. Your description is disturbing. It's worse when it's just in my head. I know. Okay. No, we'll have to. I'll have to show you. Okay, the nostalgia critic did a video on it. I'll have to show you that because Doug breaks it down perfectly. It's awesome. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> well, this right here, <laughs> I'm not sure what this is going to be, but 
So uh, we got some mystery um, Tom and Jerry trailer. Yeah. Apparently this is okay. a real thing. And I'm putting this up on screen. And well, it says 2021, not 2020. So like fingers fucking crossed on this. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, let's see what happens. Here we go. most famous enemies. You can't count on me like one, two, three. Uh-oh. Tom and Jerry are about to start over. Cause that's what friends are supposed to do. Oh! In the big city. Oh, God. This hotel has been host to four presidents, three popes, two kings, and we're about to host the wedding of the century. Do you think you're qualified to take on this position? I shine under pressure, like a diamond. Or Rihanna. <laughs> One other thing. We have a mouse problem. With the what now? I'll catch it, sir. Everybody gonna shine. I was more like this, don't even gotta try. Oh, wow, this is so detailed. <laughs> we could hire okay. an exterminator. Or we can leverage millions of years of predatory evolution. <laughs> if a picture of his mouse is tweeted out to Instabook Face or Tiki Talk, we will be ruined. No, sir, that's not gonna happen. That rodent is toast. I will not let this hotel be ruined by a cat and a mouse! I might have just pulled this off. Really? We blowing up the whole city. Everybody in the bouncy house for a bouncy, bouncy. Oh no. Oh no. Bouncy <sighs> now. Okay. Um. I feel like the putting them in the real world with people just gets in the way. It, yeah, that's one thing that I've I've always I've been weirded out by that. That's the same same thing I ran into a problem with when I saw the original Sonic trailer. The only thing that's going for this is that Tom and Jerry look the same. But if you can get like animated, you can get away with a lot more. Mm -hmm. You can get more animated expressions, like craziness and all that. But if you put funny people around them, I mean, for instance, you, you got Ken uh, Ken Jong in there. Ken Jong, I think, is a very very funny guy. Yes. Also, I think Chloe Grace Moretz can be pretty funny. Michael Pena can be hilarious. Uh, I saw. I remember him from Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. He was friggin' hilarious in that. But again, you know, when you're when you're mixing up the real world with the animated world. This can go multiple ways. If they're going to... if The way that they're going with this... I don't know if they're going to have rules to it. Because if they don't... Uh, you see, the reason why Who Framed Roger Rabbit works with that is because you establish the rules. You don't... But it's not slogged down by exposition. It's just very simple. Toons in Toon World. Humans in the human world. But yet, they can cross boundaries. They or could. like Detective Pikachu, there's a little thing for it. I thought yeah. it was great. I thought the blend of like the way things went with the characters and the actual people and the it didn't feel like there was people and then there was like digital or animated stuff. It it both worlds were like the same. Yeah. And I think that this is going to struggle in the same way that, like, the Godzilla movies have, the newer Godzilla movies. Like, yeah. the subplots involving the the human characters are going to pale in comparison to 
what we're actually there to see Tom and Jerry well, or Godzilla. Like the actors and actresses in the Godzilla movies are all great, like really good ones. Yes. But still, they just don't need to be there. There's and no balance. They, for they, they could literally just make a high budget Tom and Jerry cartoon. This isn't necessary. In my opinion, well, the way that they're doing it, it's not going to be very good. Well, effectively, what I would do instead of doing a movie like this, I would do a limited run on Netflix. Do like a 10 episode run on Netflix, like 15 minutes each. Boom. Yeah. You don't got to do anything too extravagant. Just put them in funny scenarios, make them fight each other, have inventive ways that they can get at each other. Boom. You got the classic formula right there. Also, Having the original yell from Tom would also benefit that as well, because whenever Tom got like his tail snipped or stomped or he like injured himself, you had that classic, ah, yeah, that. Whereas in this, it sounds just like it, they. I, I didn't hear like it a sounded like they turned it down or it something. Was, it was like a oh, like yeah, something like that, which again can be funny, but in full context, I don't know. Well. You see, <laughs> Also, how many times is this exact same like thing going to be available for free and then you think you're going to be able to make a movie out of it? Like, There's so many Tom and Jerry episodes spanning how long of a time? 40 years almost. There's literally every single bit you're going to be able to find somewhere and probably for free yes. and probably better quality because it's just a classic Tom and Jerry cartoon. Yeah, and, and the animators back then, you know, they it had to be good. It yeah. had to be because, you know, people wanted to get their money's worth. And that was, they were going to the movies to see these cartoons. Yes. Then. Yeah. yeah. They'd drop off their kids while they went shopping, and the kids would stay in there for like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And they'd laugh their asses off at these at these hilarious little shorts. I mean, it was a, often a battle between Warner Brothers and Disney for supremacy over who did the best anime. And you see, in terms of like the more funny and like slapstick oriented stuff, uh, they often, you know, uh, Warner and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the uh, independent animation studios at those times often had the advantage, whereas Disney was more narrative focused. Mm -hmm. Like, they like they focused more on the narrative and the overall eventual, like, moral message of the thing. Whereas this was a good slapstick laugh that you'd throw in yeah. there. And plus, I'm worried that they're going to throw in too many pop songs and it's going to be like Cat in the Hat all over again. Right. The, which the same can be said for Cat in the Hat of the question I'm about to ask for this. Who is this for and why? Uh, again, dude, at the, your target audience, <laughs> you, you see... Where's the target audience groups, for Tom and Jerry? Focus groups Nursing are... Nursing homes? To me... Like, oh, God. Dude. You know what I mean? Like, No, I ain't get what you're saying 100%. Focus I'm groups... I'm not saying I hate Tom and Jerry. No, I saying, love Tom and Jerry. Like, but... okay, this isn't even really a reboot. It's just... No, my my whole thing with with focus groups, dude. Focus groups have their place. Focus groups have their place with certain things, but determining what is good for audience. Here's the thing that Doug made a good point of this whenever he reviewed Cat in the Hat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't know what they want. Sometimes if you present people with an idea that you think is funny, and the people find it funny, then you could have something. Yeah. But if you're regurgitating the exact same shit people have seen for the last thirty to forty years. Especially nowadays, given how skeptical the world is and and how quick social media is. And with this, is. longer than 40 years. Oh, yeah. Dude, <laughs> you could get, like, you can only get away with that for so long before people are eventually rolling their eyes and looking up at their, looking at their watches or their phones and walking out of the theater. Like, it, it's the same problem the Emoji movie ran into. You or have Alvin and stick. the Chipmunks movie. Oh, you know, God. I mean, to me, this is Ugh. in the same vein, yeah. in my opinion, you know. Yeah, and... I'm glad they went with like a more classic animated look mm -hmm. of Tom and Jerry. I think if you change it up too much, like you can get away with that in Pokemon because yeah. Pokemon fandom, they want that. They yeah. want what Pokemon would look like in the real world. Right. Whereas Tom and Jerry, people are so used to them looking like this. If you'd have changed it, it would have made, it would have pissed people off. It's just the Again, overall. Again, like I don't, for who and why. Uh, yeah. I mean. There's I, no way that you can do this that it would really appeal to me, I don't think. When I could just I, go through the years and years and years of archives of Tom and Jerry doing the exact same thing, but better quality. Yes. That's just my opinion. And again, I 
you could probably you like there's arguments that can be made that this could surprise you which a lot of people said Sonic the Hedgehog did which you know they did after they finally redesigned him and you know gave what the fans wanted I'm sure with that time they also made some changes to the film I don't doubt it <laughs> that I, beyond Sonic's appearance Yeah because they realized okay yeah this shit better slap or we're fucked and it slapped <laughs> Yeah lo and hard. behold people are it's one of the highest grossing films of the year which mm-hmm. Given it's 2020, that's not saying much, but still. But it's a title, nonetheless. Yes, it is. So, yeah, yeah, every, yeah. But I'm, I'll, I'll probably watch this just to see how it goes. I'm gonna wait for some people's reviews on it, but I'll probably watch it anyway. I don't know. I likely never will, and that's fair. Yeah. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it. This was Tom and Jerry official trailer 2021. Uh, Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully we will see you all in the next one. So until then, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you then. Peace out. Don't hate you, Tom and Jerry. Oh, no, we love you.